The forest industry has been a major economic driver for the Cowichan Valley and all of Vancouver Island for a very long time. Starting more than 100 years ago, near what became Yubo, rugged individuals numbering in the hundreds and then into the thousands developed integrated infrastructure that ultimately involved two major railway systems, more than a half a dozen major logging camps, processing facilities manufacturing lumber and plywood, and eventually a pulp and paper mill at Tidewater. It was commonly known that 50% of every dollar earned in BC came from the forest industry. And for the Cowichan Valley, the percentage was even higher. The Cowichan Valley is a high quality growing area for Douglas fir, spruce, hemlock, and cedar, species in high demand around the world. But times change. In the 1990s, British Columbia's government responded to growing environmental awareness and the desire to preserve some of the province's virgin old-growth forests by taking large tracts of forest land out of production and locking it up in parks. It was not a good time to be involved in the coast forest industry in BC, and it showed. A major casualty was the Yubo sawmill complex that once provided jobs for more than 700 workers. The once proud mill complex that got its start over 100 years ago closed its doors for good in 2001, throwing the remaining 200 employees out onto the streets. All that remains today is acres and acres of what looks like an overgrown parking lot. Gone too are hundreds of logging jobs in the bush. The impacts were felt in Yubo, Lake Cowichan, and Duncan. The Cowichan Lake Community Forest Cooperative License was the first ever granted in BC and was set up as a truly community-based organization with representation from local governments, the business community, First Nations, and the IWA, as the union was known in that day. Our main goal is to provide uh, local um, mills um, to create uh, local jobs. Uh, we provide timber to uh, Couch and Lake uh, Sawmill. Um, that's our number one goal, is to create uh, that mill, making it have two shifts. Uh, we also have um, um, a chip manufacturing plant that provides wood to uh, chip fiber to uh, Crofton and Harmac. The Forest Cooperative has been plowing benefits back into the community for 20 years. It has worked with local governments to support community enhancement projects. Thousands of dollars in scholarships have been made available to local students. Timber West has been a critical supporter of the Forest Cooperative and makes it possible for the co-op to direct timber to local operations. Timber West works with the Forest Co-op in a swap arrangement that allows smaller operators like Cowich and Lake Timber to get the types of logs they need as they need them. These smaller boutique operators are too small to afford to carry log inventory for an entire year. Otter Point Poles in Chimanus and Coastland Wood Industries in Nanaimo are assured more reliable access to log supply to keep their operations going in an extremely competitive log market on the coast. We're a veneer manufacturer. We, um, we peel second growth fir, um, consume approximately 75 truckloads a day of logs. Um, we market that veneer into Canada, United States and into Asia. Coastline doesn't have any of its own tim tenure. Uh, we buy all of our timber on the open market. Uh, we source wood from just about anybody and anybody that has, has timber. Uh, anything from one truckload right up to a thousand truckloads. So um, close to a million cubic meters a year is a, is a big task to, to, <clears throat> to acquire on the open market. Uh, we're buying from private land owners, uh, crown land, small independent land owners, um, Community forests, First Nations, any, any, anywhere we, any, anybody that will sell us wood, we'll buy it from them. Uh, community forests play a play a big role in uh, in feeding our uh, log supply. Uh, 
Uh, the North American pole market uh, is quite uh, large. Uh, approximately four million poles per year are used uh, by the industry for uh, uh, replacement mainly. About 80% of the poles we produce are used in replacement. Uh, the companies that uh, use our poles are BC Hydro, uh, utilities all across North America, uh, in the United States and in Canada. Ontario uh, One and uh, Hydro-Quebec use an awful lot of our poles. Well, Vancouver Island has uh, excellent growing sites for Douglas fir and for Western Red Cedar, and the trees grow quite large, so uh, we tend to supply all sizes, especially uh, and uh, the bigger ones come from uh, from the coast here on the Vancouver Island. Great. The uh, Community Forest Co-op is one of your suppliers. Have you any idea what percentage they, they supply? Uh, to our yard, uh, they supply uh, between 6 and 10 percent of our uh, annual requirements. And are they a reliable supplier for you? They're, they, they're a reliable supplier and an important supplier for us because they have a very good quality uh, poles for our needs. Uh, then you would like the uh, Community Forest to stay around for a while? I uh, would certainly like to see the community forest uh, uh, stay uh, as a supplier for our yard. I would like to see the minister uh, approve a license for the community forest. I think it's been good for our community and good for our company. The co-op has engaged with Apache Dat First Nation, offering forest management contracts to village residents, and has found ways to make sure smaller wood processing facilities have access to logs in the Cowichan Valley and in southern Vancouver Island. Agreements with uh, Pachita First Nation is always um, a big vision of our, of our territory. I think uh, having partnerships in the forestry industry is always great and it benefits uh, uh, the community and also benefits uh, Pachita First Nation members. Joining forces with the experienced forest co-op that has been in business for almost 20 years will give the Pachidat a leg up on preparing their band members for the time when they will be responsible for managing their own forests. Band members already have been involved with doing forestry contract work for the co-op. Working together as full partners, once the new license agreement is granted, will broaden the, the opportunities for the Pachidat to gain a full round of experience for managing their own forest base. I asked Patchadat if they would uh, be, come in and uh, look at a name that was significant to them in their, in their native language. Um, they came back to us with a, they said, hey, we have a special name. And uh, the name is Kaliat. And uh, I could see by the faces on our board that it just hit right away. Um, it's a one word and it had uh, significant uh, interest to our board but also the name itself and what it what it means in their in their language is a special place in the Patchadat forest and um, that had a lot of significance in our relationship with them because it was their forest in actuality that we were we were harvesting it was in their traditional territory and uh, we think that Community Forest is a special place in the Patchadat Forest because not only for our community, but for every other community that uh, is uh, forest dependent, resource dependent, uh, this is an opportunity to have that special place where we all can come together, we can all enjoy the fruits of our labors together, and we can move this province forward, not only this province, but our communities as well. The provincial government has been working closely with the forest cooperative to see what can be set aside for a new forest license. There are many claims on a limited forest land base, but the future does look promising. The provincial government is also suggesting it will grant a two-year extension of the existing license in order to provide the time necessary to do the analysis to identify where lands can be set aside. What the co-op and the Patchydat need is a new community forest license agreement granted in the name of Calliot, the joint venture entity, with sufficient annual allowable cut that can support both communities for generations to come. <laughs>